Story 1. This is a bit of a long story about the value of being professional and nice no matter the position you are in. Mods, I have had to change some details of the story since my wife's work is very specialized. She must stay anonymous since stuff like this gets around. My wife and I moved to our current city back in 2013. The standards for my wife's job here are different from the standard back home. She has an associate's degree, and most employers wanted a bachelor's degree. However, nothing could stop her, and she kept putting in applications. One day, one of the employers she had sent applications to called her back. However, it was not to tell her she had gotten the job. Instead, it was the manager telling her how unprofessional it was of her to apply for positions that were obviously above her. In fact, she said, I'm going to delete your email from our system. Please don't apply anymore. It's just a waste of our time. I'll send you a letter since you just can't seem to follow directions in my emails. My wife, after she got over her initial shock, asked the manager for her name. I don't see why it matters, but Ivanka Tulip. My wife said thank you and continued her job hunt. Sure enough, she got the letter in the mail asking her not to apply anymore, citing an inability to follow clear directions. My wife held on to this letter. I told her to throw it away, but she insisted on keeping it. Eventually, my wife landed a job at one of the biggest employers in the city. Not only that, but this employer was the main supplier of business to the employer that was so rude to my wife. Well, my wife is an extremely precocious and hardworking person and eventually got her bachelor's and then became the manager over her crew. One of the manager's responsibilities was to decide who to send business to. My wife told her boss about the letter and what happened and used that as justification that if this is how a business treats potential hires, then they really shouldn't be trusted with their business. Her boss honestly probably did not care very much and just let my wife do what she does. Honestly, my wife is kind of a tough cookie, and it wouldn't surprise me if her boss just gave her whatever it took to keep her happy. Wouldn't you know it, the rude employer's business went way, way down. In fact, my wife would only give them business if they were the last ones who could be called. This led to the most awesome meeting my wife has had this year. To improve relations, the employer set up a meeting with my wife and her boss and the rude business's top management. They needed this meeting to show how much value they could add. The day of the meeting comes and everyone introduces themselves. Finally, Mrs. Tulip says she is the manager and how nice it was to meet everyone. That's when my wife said, Excuse me, I just want to be certain. Are you Mrs. Ivanka Tulip, Ivanka? Yes, that's me. My wife, Oh, excellent. I am so happy to finally meet you in person. Thinking she had an in with my wife, Mrs. Tulip was over the moon. My wife let them carry on and tell her all about how much value they could add to the business and how they could really help out my wife's employer. This is when my wife says, Well, thank you. But unfortunately, I feel that we can't really give business to an employer who we feel has some ethical issues that need to be addressed. Big boss from the rude employer, excuse me, we were not made aware of any ethical issues. What are you talking about? That's when my wife brought out the letter that was signed by Mrs. Tulip. My wife then tells them that if they treat potential hires this way, then it was an ethics issue for my wife, and it would be very hard for my wife to give them business. Since she had concerns about the welfare of the business, she couldn't approve any more bad business than absolutely necessary. Mrs. Tulip turned white, and you could hear a pin drop on the other side of the table. My wife thanked them for their time, apologized, and went back to her work. We don't know if anything ever happened to Mrs. Tulip, but that business has since downsized and has gotten a reputation for being a poor choice to send business throughout my wife's organization. A quick edit. First of all, wow, I'm totally blown away by how much this post blew up. Way beyond what I was expecting. I'll address some concerns people have had. The business in question had multiple things going on, including bad outcomes from previous business that were sent their way. I should have been more clear about that. To be perfectly honest, if I had known how much this would have blown up, I probably wouldn't have shared. To the folks who say this is all made up, I completely understand where you are coming from. I would love to give more details. However, it's just not worth it since my wife works in a small industry. What I will say is that anything you read on Reddit, you should take with a huge grain of salt. Believe it, don't believe it totally up to you.
I do understand where you are coming from, though, and had I not been there and read this same post from your perspective, I would probably feel the same way. To the folks who think that my wife's only reason for doing what she did was the letter, it's not. All I can say is that the business in question would not have had any issues had they just done what they were supposed to do. That's all I can say about it. My wife's letter was kind of the icing on the cake and an example of poor behavior on their part. Anyways, I hope you all have enjoyed it. Have a great day. I have to get back to work, so see you all on the internet when I get back home. Story 2 This is a super throwback, but it still brings a smile to my face. Also, my writing isn't the best, so please excuse the grammatical errors. I was a rink rat growing up. The only day I wasn't in the skating rink was adult and gay nights calmed down. It was the 90s, and that's literally what it was called. Friday night, Saturday morning and night, along with Sunday morning and night, I was there. I didn't even leave between the morning and night sessions. I even went on Tuesday nights as well. I was serious too. I dove deep into speed skating and not trying to toot my own horn, but I was pretty good and well-known. Anyway, I'd been going to this specific skating rink for years and knew everyone. One day, right before I started seventh grade, the owner came up to me and asked me to go out onto the rink floor and tell some kids to slow down. I did and came back, and he asked me how I would like to make $7.50 an hour, to which I responded. Do I also get in for free? He laughed and said, of course. Boom, first job, and I wanted to be there anyway. So it was the biggest win-win of all time for me. To say I loved it was an understatement, and I did everything besides work the snack bar. DJ, skate counters, floor guard, janitor, hype man, you name it, and I did it. It was some of the greatest times of my life. So much fun, and the owner was super awesome. Also, we were paid under the table, so getting an envelope full of cash every week just felt like a bonus for having fun. To me, it wasn't a job, it was pure fun. It also helped that all my friends were regulars as well. A few years went by, and the owner sold the ring to another guy who we will call Tim. Tim could be an absolute nightmare to work for. He changed the entire dynamic of the place, and everyone felt it. Now, this skating rink was popular and extremely old. Lots of people all over the city knew of it. My mom and aunt skated there when they were kids, if that tells you anything. Somehow, the new owner set up a deal that had the rink making a lot of money. On Saturday night from 7-Eleven, it was skating as usual, but from 11-2-ish slash 3-ish, it was a club. A local hip-hop station came in there with a local label, Swisha House, and turned the place upside down for those few hours. Every week, the place was packed. There must have been over 2,000 people in there on average, and at $1.20 per person, it added up quickly. Plus, the snack bar would never stop turning out food and drink. We were making a lot of money. Bonus, we also found some good stuff when cleaning up as well. Money, knives, marijuana, jewelry. It was awesome. So Tim has it made, but sometimes he would fly off the handle for little things. All of us weren't sure what his deal was, but he would explode out of nowhere and start talking all kinds of nonsense. I'd started to have enough because we all had worked there for many years without issue. One night, he went too far. I don't like being called outside of my name. It's a respect thing. My own mother didn't do it, and he for sure wasn't. For context, I was in 10th grade now. One night, he was in some kind of mood and, for whatever reason, was taking it out on everyone. I don't remember the exact situation, but he started freaking out on me at about 11.30 p.m. Now, Slim Thug and Paul Wall were in the building that night, so the place was extra packed. Way more than usual, I'm sure we were breaking all kinds of fire marshal rules. Ha <laughs> ha. He went ballistic and called me every name in the book while I just stood there with rage building up in me. I'd had enough. For years, this place ran flawlessly, and everyone loved us, so he really didn't have a good reason to treat us in the manner he did. My plan was formed. I immediately gathered everyone else that was working and we all decided that enough was enough. It was time for a lesson. I gathered the entire crew, and we all quit on the spot. All of us. That meant nobody to serve food, clean, help the Swisha House people, or just carry out general things that needed to be done when two, three thousand people were in the building. He was stunned, his tone changed, and he became very sweet. We weren't having it. 
As an additional slight, I called the other two people that were off, and they showed up to quit as well. Tim had already reached out, so he assumed they were showing up to work. Nope. We left him with zero workers on the absolute busiest of busy nights, and boy did it implode. He couldn't find anyone to work, so the place went to chaos that night. The on-duty officer told him he needed to figure something out or he was going to close it down without workers. Well, he didn't. It closed down that night, and apparently without staff, it got nasty. People started having intimate moments, smoking, trashing the place, and all kinds of stuff. Shortly after, the radio station and label took their business elsewhere, and not long afterward, the place closed down. He lost his entire investment. This was very bittersweet for me because I loved the place, but he ran it into the ground. The building is still standing, and I would love to bring it back to its former glory, but my pockets aren't deep enough yet. Maybe one day. Clarification edit. So, allow me to clarify some concerns. First off, this was a skating rink, so no alcohol. I've never seen a skating rink serve alcohol, haha. -ha. The club night was only Saturdays. This never happened on any other day, ever. Yes, it was insanely packed. When I say there were a lot of people, it's an understatement. Also, the parking lot in front of the building was crawling with people, and so was the one to the right of the building, which had a supermarket. A ton of people parked there, so the party overflowed. The people were allowed to walk in and out with wristbands. I know the amount of people was excessive because the building had a 4 AC system, but only two worked, so we would go outside throughout the night to cool off because the heat was overwhelming. Hence, the reason customers could come and go. Yes, the crew quit. Three of us lived on the same block and were childhood friends. The others went way back, and when I say this owner ran the place down, he ran the place down, so it wasn't a hard sell. It was no longer a fun place to work, and eventually that bled over into the customers not wanting to come back. There is another person in the comments who worked with me, and he can back it up. Yes, I was hired when I was 13, 14-ish. Yes, I was getting paid under the table. Yes, I was in middle school when I started and worked there till either the summer after 9th grade or during 10th grade. It was more than 20 years ago, so I can't remember exact dates for the hair splitters. Seeing as how three of us lived on the same block, getting a ride wasn't a problem, and eventually, we all started driving. So yeah, old enough. Yes, local radio stations and local record labels put on the shows. Underground hip-hop stars that are insanely popular here still were present every Saturday, which drew huge crowds. The other Redditor in here was the one I called, which was at about 12 am, and he got out of bed to come and quit. We all went to Denny's to celebrate afterward. 